So let's talk generics. We're used to with methods being able to parameterize values that go in. It's quite nice because we define our values up here and we can call these functions. For example, I have a square function that uh, squares its argument and returns that value as an int. And so I can change the value I'm squaring but just simply by passing different values in as the argument. So 5, 8, 13, and so forth. Run it. You can see here the respective squares of each of these values. Okay, well that's nice, but uh, templates allow us to, instead of parameterizing the um, value that's coming in, we can parameterize the type. So let me give you a, a little, uh, let's change up the example a little bit. I'm going to make a class, I'm going to call it pair, right, and I want to say, but basically a pair object, they're useful, they're also sometimes called tuples, except they can have more than two items in them. But essentially I'm going to make a little helper class that can store two values in it. So Let's uh let's make one that can do two ints. So we're gonna say public int first and uh, get set. And I'm just gonna control L, control V V. I'm gonna say second. So a very simple class here, and I can store two ints in it. But if I wanted say I wanted a pair that I could store, I don't know, let's do uh int and a float. So let's do float, oops, capital F. And I'm gonna say pair int float. How about that? Pair int float, and this is gonna be pair int int and uh, well we need another version that could store a um, I don't know how about a uh, uh, two floats let's do two floats float float all right so now this one's gonna be a float all right hopefully you see where I'm going with this so now we have all these classes look roughly the same and I can use them down here so I'm gonna say pair int int p gets new Pair int int, I'm going to say first gets 5, second gets oh, 20, all right, and then say, you know, well, that's a good pair, but say I actually want to do people pair, like, I don't know, marriage partners or dancing partners, so pair string string, oh, psh, look at that, I don't have a string string version. Let's go grab one of these, copy, paste, and um, let's put string here, and string, oops, sorry, string here. And uh, I'm going to use Alt, drag a square there, and say string. So now I have a pair that can store two strings. So I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, marriage one gets new, that. And uh, first is going to be Susie. And second second's going to be uh, Bob. Should be easy enough. And All right, wait, maybe we should be politically correct here. Let's do marriage one. Marriage two, marriage three. Uh, Susie and Bob, how about Fred with Bill? There you go, politically correct. And, uh, I don't know, uh, Samantha with maybe Rover, her dog. Who knows? Okay, so now I have these pair string strings, and I can I have these values here, and I could put this in a collection of sorts. But anyway, notice uh, I'm really only using pair int int, not really doing much with it, and then pair string string. And the rest of these are kind of... Superfluous. I'm not really using them, but they're there just in case I need it. But if I don't need them, then they're still there. Uh, we can uh, hopefully no surprises here. I can look at the marriages first, run that, and we get Susie. But I want to actually say let's console write line marriage dot two string, which is going to require me to go up here and override if I can do it two string, and let's return. First, actually, let's let's format this a little bit like a real a pair. Uh, plus first plus throw a comma plus uh, second. And those of you who are probably ahead of the game probably noticed that anonymous types would do this for us as well. But we're just gonna go with this example. So now I'm gonna say uh, write marriage one two string, and we got Susie and Bob. Maybe with a little extra formatting there. Okay, Susie and Bob. All right, well, now I've just written this two string. I got to go and paste all this and then paste it. Oops, and paste it. And you see how error prone, hopefully, and unmaintainable this code is quickly becoming because I'm pasting all this stuff here. But but if you look at this from a bird's eye view, that's pretty bird's eye, but we'll go in here. Notice the, um, what, what's different? This looks the same as this, looks the same as this. Looks the same as this. And when you get that, you need to think in your head, oh, I need to be able to factor factor my code somehow. Well, well, what, what's the difference between this versus 
this versus this. Well, the function, you know, we can easily break functions and make the arguments and stuff. But, but the difference here now is, is uh, this has an int here and a float here, and this has float float. This has string string. But the rest is all the same. And we have first. Notice the two string code is identical. All that stuff. So, so let's. It'd be nice if we could just write one pair class that could handle any type. And given that it could handle any type, we'll only make the types we need and leave out the types that we don't need. For example, I never used int or float. So that's where generics can come to the rescue. I'm going to say pair int int. Instead, I'm going to say pair uh, t u. And I'm just making up these. I mean, they're, they're argument names. They're parameter names. I can put whatever I want here. I could put hippo if I want. But, but generally, we stick with t, maybe a u here. And then I don't need all these anymore. Okay. Get rid of all that. I'm just control L there to get rid of all that. And then uh and, and now instead of saying pair int int, I'm going to say pair int int. Alright, and I have to go over here and do the same thing. Pair int int. Alright, so I still got the first, I still got the second, I still get this nice little two string here. And then here let's do pair. I'm doing alt drag there to make that happen. Pair string String, I guess I could say var if I wanted to, but let's do just pair, string, string, all right, and then, uh, Samantha, what's the, what's the problem with this? Oh, I have, <laughs> I still have ints here. I got to say, I got to say for the first one, I got to say, well, it's a T, and this is going to be a U, all right? See how I parameterize the type? I Instead of saying int here, I'm saying, well, whatever parameterized type you want it to be. It could be an int or it could be a string. It's up to you. Parameterize. It almost looks like I'm calling a function here, except instead of using um, parentheses like we're used to, uh, I'm using angle brackets. All right. So anyway, run this. Hey, look, same result. I got one class. I can reuse it all over the place. So hey, generics. That's nice. So basic intro to generics. We're just parameterizing types instead of parameterizing argument values. Maybe you can think back to the delegate videos, and there we parameterize the me methods or functions that we're passing. Anyway, generics.